Hey, it's Dave Rettelberger here from the Schottenstein Center and Nationwide Arena. Happy holidays. Uh, we are uh, back again with my good friend, Gary, the arena guy. Arena guy, how you doing? Doing great. Doing great. You know, considering the way of the world. Uh, how are you doing? I'm doing? I like the branding there, the uh, arena guy sweatshirt. Are those available in the uh, the arena guy holiday shop this year? Or? Yes. Just got to East Center Polaris and uh, just about, uh, you know, all, per, all, all uh, stores uh, carry it. I like the, the display in the back of the Apple store, I think was the one that really surprised me. That yeah. was a nice touch, so. I think there's a special going on now if you order before the 15th, or, or the 15th, I guess, uh, you can uh, get uh, delivery before Christmas. There you go, <laughs> act quick on that one. I'm <laughs> uh, having trouble talking today, I'm sorry about that. Oh, that'll be part of the fun. Uh, you know, it's been a, a fun week for uh, music. I mean, what with Taylor Swift released a new album and a yeah. new, new McCartney album coming out this week. It's it's kind of fun to have new music to listen to. It is, uh, since there hasn't been as much new music during the pandemic as, you know, during a, a, a normal time. So Taylor Swift, you know, she came out with her new album, uh, Evermore, right? And yep. just really surprised everybody with that. And uh, which, which is kind of fun. That's kind of fun. And, and that's part of what Taylor Swift does. She's uh, not really predictable. And then McCartney has probably one of his best reviewed albums in a long time of original material. And uh, I haven't uh, heard the album yet, but I've read the reviews and uh, it sounds really great. And being a, a McCartney fan, I'm actually looking forward to getting that. Yeah, I like that he called it McCartney Three, right? Because yeah, it, it's it, it's definitely putting a signature on it with it saying, "Hey, this is this is belongs of the McCartney trilogy." I guess right. now, so that's kind of cool. Yeah, very cool. Hey, uh, so so our topic today, speaking of, of music, which is what we do here often in live music, is uh, the greatest Christmas music songs of all time. Before <laughs> we get into our list, though, Arena Guy, are you are you a big Christmas music fan? Do you turn on Christmas music uh, in uh, early November and keep it on through the whole holiday season? Or what, what are your personal Christmas music habits? Um, I love Christmas. And I'm a sentimental Christmas guy. I, I believe in uh, uh, traditions and... Uh, I, I love what Christmas is and what it means and, and the joy that it brings and just everything that Christmas is. Um, but I typically do not begin until after we see Santa Claus at the end of the Macy's Day Parade on Thanksgiving Day. So That is the exact moment that yeah. I believe is acceptable. I am 100% on the same page there with you. Yeah. So I normally do not decorate uh, before then. Um, out of a little curiosity, sometimes, uh, you know, radio stations will start uh, playing Christmas music early and I might tune in just to get a little taste, but it's not a regular thing. But pretty much after Thanksgiving and especially like in the weeks leading up to Christmas, I'm listening to it on a pretty regular basis. So I love Christmas. Um, you know, I am from Illinois, so I go home for Thanksgiving and Sometimes, uh, you know, I'm, I'm home for like four or five days, then I come back. You don't really feel like setting up the tree right away. And then before you know it, it's like two weeks before Christmas. So what I've been doing the last couple of years is I put up the tree before Thanksgiving because of my travel schedule, but I don't decorate it until after I get back. Is the tree decorated now? It is. I have to say it is. Well, let me clarify. <laughs> Oh gosh, to, to, to know me is to just scratch your head all the time. <laughs> My downstairs tree uh, is a regular tree and it's uh, comprised mostly of ornaments that my dad and my mom have made. My dad uh, and mom both are incredibly talented and, and uh, have made these ornaments and there's filled my tree from over the past couple of decades. And uh, upstairs is a smaller tree and I put entertainment themed ornaments on there, music ornaments, um, TV show, classic movies. I got some It's a Wonderful Life, Sinatra, Elvis, um, Andrea Bocelli was added to it uh, this past year after we did him last December. So yeah, so that's kind of my fun entertainment tree. I might have, maybe I, I could see a segment maybe next week we'll do, uh, have you highlight a few pieces on the tree that could be fun. Okay. Sure. Uh, well, today we are talking about the, uh, uh, and because I love that idea, we, much like you, have our tree up. It's been up. We have the ribbons on, we have the lights on, but haven't done the ornaments yet. Maybe tonight, 
Maybe we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get to it, but then we'll leave it up till February, you know, because I always feel like, you know, it's nice when the Christmas lights go up and because it's always kind of uh, gray and blah this time of year. And then when they come down, it's kind of sad. So I think, I think this year, my, my wife decided that we're going to keep it up as long as possible. Just okay. it's, a, it's a fake tree, right? So that's, that makes it right. Difference. Right. And I keep it up as long as possible too, until I just can't stand it being up anymore. And that's because of laziness, not because of your <laughs> thinking. All right. Well, today we are talking about uh, the greatest Christmas songs of all time. Uh, you know, it, it's one of those things where Christmas music is definitely something people are very, some people are super passionate about it. Some people can't stand it, but I do feel there are certain songs and it's funny because there's no other real music like this that you really only listen to for one month out of the year. Right. But there are certain songs that I feel it's not the holiday season if I don't hear these songs. So uh, here we go with the, uh, the arena guy and I doing our list of the, the greatest Christmas songs of all time. Arena guy, I will defer to you and, and let you have the, uh, the first option here today. Okay, you know, you, you you should know by now, you can't ask me a simple question and get a simple answer. That's so, true. To me, there are a lot of categories. I'm a very sentimental guy, um, which is not a shock to you. Uh, anyone who knows me knows that I'm a sensitive, sentimental guy. So like you say, it's not Christmas until I hear White Christmas by Bing Crosby, uh, the Christmas song, uh, which is just not supposed to buy an open fiber, Nat King Cole, or a Holly Jolly Christmas by Burl Ives, or It's the Most Wonderful Time of the Year by Andy Williams. Those are the standards, and you need- You just stuck four in already. Well, no, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm gonna give you my list. This is outside of my list. You know so, what, I, I got you, I'm with you, I'm with you. This is my explanation. So, <laughs> you need those standards to be a part of Christmas. And by those artists, and, and there's a handful of agreed. them. Totally agreed. Yeah. And then there's the, the ones, and I guess I mentioned Holly Jolly Christmas, which is from uh, Rudolph, which is my favorite. Uh, I have to watch all the TV specials. It's part of my traditions. So <laughs> Rudolph and Frosty. And, and now on cable, they've got the, some of the other standards, like, uh, you know, the Earth Without Santa Claus and all that kind of stuff. And It's a Wonderful Life is a must. My all-time favorite movie tied with The Lion King, of course. But, um, and, and Rocket Man. So, um, <laughs> so music from those are real important also. And, uh, and I have to say, to, to go along with the sentimental side is, we used to spend Christmas Eve at my grandparents' house. And they had these albums. The younger people listening and watching, uh, an album is a 12 inch piece of vinyl. Actually, the more, they're coming back now, so you probably know what vinyls are, vinyl records are. But they would be like from Firestone or a gas station. Marathon. Co yeah, a compilation of artists like uh, Barbara Streisand or Glenn Campbell or Montavani and some of these, Percy Faith and some of these instrumental people that were popular back then and they put them on one album. And I love those albums because it brings back memories of those days as a kid when my grandparents would put those on. So, and then, the, then there's, uh, as, as I just kind of continue, feel free to interrupt me at any time, um, there are also standards that are considered to, considered to be a little more contemporary, but there aren't really any contemporary classics, really. If you think of songs that are considered to be somewhat modern, because most of the Christmas classics are either the carols that go back centuries or uh, White Christmas, I'll Be Home for Christmas, World War, World War II era type stuff. Um, there really hasn't been a new standard in the past. We're talking like 40 or 50 years. The closest might be Mariah Carey. I say that's that's the one that stands out to me is. But as that's potential. already 25 years old. That's crazy, right? It's crazy. So there hasn't been like a new standard in the past decade, but they used to come out like three, four or five a year, you know, way back when, before we were even born. So, um, you know, are there new standards? So my list is comprised of a mixture of both, but my list, I've kind of done some more contemporary people. And so I don't know if you want me to go through my whole list or just do one at a time. Just give me, give me your first one. Give me off the top of your list. I have to start out when, when I had my radio show before I moved to Columbus between working in arenas, uh, I did a Christmas special every year and I kicked off my Christmas special 
with uh, No Shocker, an Elton John song called Step Into Christmas, which I think is like the perfect first song because it's cheerful, it's happy, it's welcoming, welcome to my Christmas song. Uh, it's a great starter song for the season or a special and it's just happy. It's everything that Christmas uh, is, is, you know, entails about, you know, friendships and happiness and, and the joy of the season. So that's my first one, Elton John. But that came out in 1975. So we're talking 45 years ago. Yeah. And my first one I'll throw out, I think also at least was recorded in 1975, uh, which is it's an older classic. But the version I have to hear every year is Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. I know. I just um, think it's one of those ones. Now, not everybody loves that song. Some people really hate that song. But to me, that's a Christmas classic. You know, I, uh, I like it too. And I totally agree. You have to hear that song. That's one of those you have to hear. And a uh, hundred other people can do it. And a hundred, a thousand people did it before Bruce. But Bruce's version is the one that really sticks. Yeah. You know, I did that for a concert. Uh, there was talk about him doing a Christmas album at one time. He really didn't, wasn't feeling it because to do a Christmas album, you have to usually do that in July. He wasn't feeling Christmas in the summertime. So he did a live version of that in Merry Christmas Baby at a concert. And those versions get uh, regular airplay now. And uh, it's cool to see the boss represented at Christmas time. Absolutely. And I remember, uh, I think it was 2002 on the Rising Tour uh, when Springsteen played here at the Schottenstein Center. Uh, and it was a December show, and people in the crowd were holding up signs for uh, Santa Claus, and he starts to play it, and a whole bunch of the, the folks down front put on Santa hats uh, <laughs> while he was playing it. And so to hear, I uh, actually get to hear Santa Claus is coming to town live here at the shot was a, uh, a very, very cool moment. So that is a, uh, the, yeah. and the little, the, at the end, when they kind of go into the jingle bells uh, on the yeah. uh, xylophone or whatever that is at the end, just a nice moment. And, uh, yeah, it is. Oh, I wish I would have heard that. Um, so that, that's very cool. All right, what's next on your list? <clears throat> well, you know, when we talk Christmas songs, we talk about songs and there's carols. There is a difference. Carols tend to be more religiously based and uh, the songs are more like White Christmas, uh, Chestnuts, Roast on an Open Fire and that kind of thing. Um, one of my favorite carols is O Holy Night. It's, it's one of my favorite songs ever. And a lot of people have done it. And a lot of people can't do it or they can't do it justice. Um, there's only a handful of people that I really like hearing that song because of that carol, because it's such a great song. It demands a great vocal. It's a powerful, uh, it's, it's just a powerful song. So yeah, for sure. the most recent version that I really like of this, and there's a handful that I do like is uh, Josh Groban. Oh, ah, okay a really great version you you know that i like him as an artist anyway and uh his version is christmas album is phenomenal by the way but the oh holy night song version on there is just outstanding i thought you were gonna go with neil diamond's version you know no <laughs> i like neil diamond i like neil diamond he's done a couple of christmas albums now which i which i think is very interesting but um yeah, that does remind me, though, I do have another song that did not make my list that is Neil Diamond. That is actually one of my favorites. Throw it out there. Go ahead. Um, I need to, uh, You Make It Feel Like Christmas. Yes, yes. That's a great, it is a first one. Um, that's one of those songs that I don't know why it didn't catch on because it's got the great sentiment for Christmas. It's Neil Diamond. It's a great Neil Diamond ballad. Um, it's one of my all-time favorites. I neglected to put that on my list, but uh, that is definitely on there. You Make It Feel Like Christmas by Neil Diamond. That's a great track, and I, I do enjoy a lot of his uh, uh, Christmas uh, stuff. It depends. Uh, you so know, you like some said, of it's interesting. <laughs> yeah, some of it's a little whimsical. That's okay. When he tries to go a little serious with Christmas music, I, 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 I don't know. I think he's hit or miss. Silver Bells. I'll leave it at yeah, that. Okay. <laughs> hey, uh, all right, so you mentioned Sentimental, right, and a, a song that uh, – uh, getting sentimental this time of year. And so there's one that stands out for me above all others that really hits home for me, especially here in 2020. Okay. And uh, that is uh, James Taylor, uh, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. Okay. So now for people who are historians of the song, um, you know, the original version of it had somewhat kind of bummer lyrics. They talk about how in a year, 
we will all be together if the fates allow. Until then, we have to muddle through somehow. And, and that kind of rings true this year, uh, uh, especially. And uh, James Taylor, or Sinatra had the lyrics updated to be a little more cheerful uh, when he recorded the song. But James Taylor went back to the original lyrics uh, when he did it for his Christmas album, which is one of my favorite albums all the way through. But his yeah, version, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, uh, top of my list. It's, it's, it's a good one. I like it too. You know, the original version was Judy Garland in Meet Me in St. Louis, the movie, which was not a Christmas movie, but it was. Um, and so a lot of people do the original version. A lot of people update it like, like Sinatra did. Um, so it just depends on how authentic somebody wants to be with the song. Uh, it is also on my list. Um, ah, there you go. I think Christmas is a time when you can admit that you listen to a couple of artists that maybe you wouldn't lis admit to listening to during uh, the 11 mo months out of the year, the other time. <laughs> and so I think uh, I've got two favorite versions of the song. And one is uh, uh, the one that we do here on the radio all the time, which is the Carpenters. Uh, Have Yourself a Merry Little. Okay. I like their version a lot. Uh, and I love Carpenters Christmas music. And I will admit that. Now, you know, maybe I'm the most unhip guy in the world if I admit that I listen to them any other time of the year. But Christmas, <laughs> that ship has sailed, my friend. Yeah, yeah. Their first Christmas album is outstanding. Merry and, Christmas, Darling. Is that on the list? Is that? Yeah, it, it is not, but I like it. That's it's a good track. You know, it's one of those, again, it's another one of those that came out, I believe, in 1970. So we're talking 50 years. Yeah. And it's considered one of the newer Christmas songs. Right. But, um, uh, there was a charity album that came out and Kenny Loggins did a version, which knocks my socks off. It is uh, really good. And nobody ever hears it because they don't play his version, but it's really good. And that's just another great Christmas standard. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of uh, The Pretenders. Uh, Chrissy Hind okay. did a version on the Very Special Christmas album. Which, which is, is a fun favorite. album. Yeah, it's a great album. Uh, you know, the Run DMC Christmas and Hollis track is on there. Uh, another one of my favorites, uh, Eurythmics Winter Wonderland. Uh, yeah, that's just a great album. That's just a great album. But and Stevie uh, Nicks I, actually doing Silent Night. Yeah, got top forty airplay, which for Silent Night, you know, you know, hundreds of years old. <laughs> that is that is one of the that came out at a uh, great time in the mid '80s, and it's just a it's a yeah. just a great Christmas album. There's a there's a whole series of those which have some some hidden gems on there. Yeah. All right, what's next on your list, Arena Guy? Okay, well, uh, it, you know, we touched on Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. Uh, uh, go back to another contemporary song, which uh, is probably 40 years old at least, and, and we've done her in concert. She's kind of thought of as being one of the more modern day Christmas artists. Uh, like, you know, when you think of modern day Christmas artists, you think maybe now of Michael Buble a little bit, and uh, certainly Amy Grant. And she has a song, uh, she does all the great uh, songs and, uh, and uh, carols on her four or five Christmas albums, but the one that I like the best is personal to her. It's called Tennessee Christmas. And it was a hit record uh, at the time. It doesn't get that much airplay anymore. And I, I, I don't know why. I love it. And it's one of my all-time favorite Christmas songs. So that's one of those I have to play on my own. Yeah, her, her first Christmas album is great. But Tennessee yeah. Christmas, which we've had the chance to see live at, yeah. at Nationwide Arena a couple times recently, uh, is, is a special song. And the crowd goes nuts when they hear it. Yeah. I don't know why it's not included in the, the mix. My wife got a Tennessee Christmas T-shirt at the last Amy Grant Christmas show. Oh, really? She wears it year-round. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a Tennessee Christmas in our house. And it's, it's neither Christmas nor in Tennessee that she wears it. So, yeah. <laughs> that is true. Well, next on my list is a, uh, a song we talked on the sentimental side, but part of what I love about Christmas, too, is the, the, some of the goofy Christmas songs. And my personal favorite is a uh, boy an old classic which doesn't doesn't get a lot of airplay but for those who do enjoy it uh it's a uh, it's a uh, it hits home for me uh, a gal named gala peavy uh and uh, i want a hippopotamus for christmas is one of my all-time favorites my family sings along to it every year we really enjoy it uh that is uh, a must listen to every year at christmas time in our family i'm surprised you know the artist's name <laughs> how could you get more obscure but <laughs> The song is a classic, you know, when you get to the quirky, like Spike Jones and, and, uh, you know, all I want for Christmas, my two front teeth. Or the Dr. Demento Christmas album. Doctor, which is so much fun. Uh, and so you have to be a little careful with the quirky stuff. You know, you almost, you, you need to hear a little chipmunks. Yes, absolutely. You know, you need to hear, uh, 
the hip, hippopotamus, you need to know what the, all I want for Christmas two front teeth. Uh, you don't need to hear the barking dogs do jingle bells. <laughs> once in a lifetime is enough. Once is enough. Uh, you can argue all day long with somebody about grandma got run over by a reindeer. Uh, I've, I've interviewed Elmo several times. Uh, you know, the first version with, it was with Elmo and Patsy. And Patsy, right, yeah. Then they got divorced, and then he did. He re-recorded it for another label, and he was just Elmo, Doctor so, <laughs> Doctor Elmo. So, um, you know, I remember when that first came out. That was like the huge, incredible novelty song, and now uh, that is often regarded as one of the worst Christmas songs of all time. So people have a low tolerance level for that song, and you really don't hear it on the radio just every no. once in a while. But uh, yeah, I like, I like, there, there's a little quirkiness in Christmas music, which is fun. So I like that choice. Yeah, and my subtitle, my sub along with that, there's one called Dominic the Donkey. Uh, <laughs> oh, gosh. He, he says, what I was raised on. Uh, yeah. Just family, you know, the goofy stuff, you know, makes the kids laugh and we, we enjoy it. So that's, that's, yes. my, that's my goofy side. What, back to your list of being a guy. <laughs> um, I like a couple of standards and uh, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas is one of my favorites. Um, and I always say the line, you know, sometimes when we speak or I speak to my friends and somebody will say something, uh, I use song lyrics and uh, somebody will say, oh, it's snowing out. And I'll say, yeah, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. You know, there's a, there's a tree in the Grand Hotel, one in the park as well. You know, the sturdy kind that doesn't mind the snow. and Everybody I know rolls their eyes at me. I'm so used to it now, but uh, I, I love that song. And, you know, it was originally done by Bing Crosby, but it's been done some, as, as with almost all Christmas music, it's been done by so many different people. And uh, it's just a good one. Michael Buble actually hit the top 10 on the Christmas charts with his version of it. Yeah, it is a, uh, a great song. You mentioned Bing Crosby. So I have to pull uh, one of my favorites off my list, which is Bing Crosby and David Bowie. Doing little oh my cool gosh, how did I forget that? Peace on Earth, uh, yes. which is just, it's two generations coming together. And it's just, uh, uh, you know, they used to run the video on MTV when they ran videos, yes. right? Uh, but it's just their voices together. It's just, it almost gives you chills just when you, when you hear it every time. An unlikely pair. It uh, David Bowie was a guest on Bing Crosby's very last Christmas special. Yeah. And I think... Either Bing Crosby passed away right after that special or he passed away just before it aired, but it was about the same time. So that was to, to keep using the word sentimental, which I guess is you can do at Christmas time. Um, that that song then was pulled off kind of like uh, during Princess Diana's funeral when Goodbye England's Rose or Candle in the Wind 97 was uh, pulled off TV to play on radio. They did the same thing with this song and top 40 radio stations were playing it off just recorded off TV and then they released a, a 45, which I do have, but it's from the live recording because they never did do a studio recording of it. And what a great song. I interviewed Johnny Mathis once, which is kind of like him uh, several times, but one time I spoke to him and he's kind of a modern day Christmas guy. He did a version of, uh, 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 of Sleigh Ride with Bette Midler, which is really Okay, good. I haven't heard that one. <laughs> but uh, I told him, you know what? What you ought to do in your next Christmas album is redo that song. Instead of Bing Crosby and David Bowie, you know, just, just give a call to Reggie. Give uh, Elton John a call, and you and Elton John redo that song, and that could be a modern version. And he said, I like that idea. Of course, it's never happened, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it was a suggestion. It was worth a shot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, so uh, um, looking at uh, that, I have a couple more on my list, but how, what do you got? You still have a couple left, or one or two? Well, or? Yeah, those are kind of my top five. You've mentioned a couple that I really should have included on my list, which was uh, Bing Crosby, David Bowie. Um, you know, you, you make it feel like Christmas, which is a great Neil Diamond song. Um, Johnny Mathis's last Christmas CD, which won the uh, Grammy Award for Best Pop Album of the Year a couple years ago. Uh, it's called uh, Sending You, uh, I'm sending you, sending you a Little Christmas. Uh, that title song is really good. And I'm really surprised that it hasn't caught on too. It is really good. It's in like the old standard theme. That's one of my favorites. And on my radio show where I kicked off uh, the three hour show with uh, Step Into Christmas, I would always close it with a song that uh, a lot of people don't know. Also, I'm, I'm going obscure deep cuts here, but Stephen Curtis Chapman, his first Christmas album, he did a song called Christmas is All in the Heart. 
And uh, to me, it also kind of encapsulates, as if that's a word, uh, everything having to do with Christmas too. And I would close with that song. And uh, it's kind of like a sentimental way to that's kind very of cool. reflect, you know, it's kind of one of those songs you listen to. Uh, I envision, you know, turning out the lights, but the Christmas lights are on, the lights are out, maybe there's a fire in the fireplace. And it's just one of those mellow, sentimental songs that kind of defines Christmas. Absolutely. And that's a, that's a great recommendation there. I, I you know, I, I pretty much finished my list, but I had like 35 honorable mentions. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm just going to run down my list real quick. All right. So of course, Eagles, please come home for Christmas. Yeah. Right. just, I, it's to get, it's just one of those perfect Christmas songs. The Muppets, John Denver Christmas album Love is, it. A, is, is great. The 12 days of Christmas uh, is always one that brings us joy. Uh, Trans-Siberian Orchestra, of course, which we talked about a little bit last week, doing their live stream this Friday night. Uh, great stuff. Andrea Bocelli with some of his Christmas stuff he does. Uh, Darlene Love is like the perfect voice for Christmas music and all the stuff that Phil Spector did with her. Uh, just great Jackson 5, the Beach Boys, Little St. Nick, uh, Jose Feliciano, right? Feliz Navidad, uh, Elvis Blue Christmas, uh, Hall & Oates, uh, uh, Jingle Bell Rock, right, which they did a Daryl version and John did a version. Uh, so Daryl's version is the one, of course, that gets, gets a little more airplay, but yeah. so many so many great Christmas classics. Anything else that topped your list? Well, uh, you mentioned uh, like Jose Feliciano, who it's, it's been 50 years since that song came out. Or he just was on Jimmy Fallon doing a 50th anniversary version. It was pretty cool. I saw that. It was very cool. Um, I put a lot of this Christmas music into various categories because we did not ahead of time discuss any uh, guidelines on what qualified as your top five, whether it was carols or, or standards or contemporary sure. or whatever, which just left it wide open. So it allowed uh, a, a lot of thought to go into it. And it occurred to me that there are a lot of artists who are great artists who, if it was not for their Christmas classic, they may have just been another artist that had a hit song or two or three, but are not known by everybody. And what is Jose Feliciano? He had some hits like My Fire. He's had a, a, a lot of great music, but most people who pay attention to Christmas music know Jose Feliciano's name because of Feliz Navidad. Yeah, sure. He's one of those. Another might be Brenda Lee, Rocking Around the Christmas Tree. She had a lot of hits. She was very popular uh, in, in the late 50s, early 60s. And, but every year she gets that airplay with Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree. A lot of people have covered it, but it's her version that's definitive. So Brenda Lee is forever in our heads because of that song. Even, even like uh, Gene Autry, Roy Rogers is probably yeah. more famous, but Gene Autry doing Here Comes Santa Claus and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Every year we hear Gene Autry and the legend of Gene Autry continues. And you mentioned Jingle Bell Rock. It's done by a guy named Bobby Helms. Yeah, sure for the original version of Jingle Bell Rock and hearing Bobby Helms and that version gets the most airplay, nobody would even know who he, who he was. So Christmas songs do keep some careers going, I think. Darlene Love, um, Letterman had her on every single year to do that song. It's one of his favorite moments of the year. Favorite moments of the year. And I, we all look forward to it. It became uh, a tradition and I'm all about tradition. So uh, she would be on, and, and when he went off the air, poor Darlene, Darlene Love, where does she go? Well, The View has now picked it up. So the last couple of years, she's been doing The View every I year. I did not know that. Singing that song. Whoopi Goldberg does a big spiel about it. And it's, it's awesome to see her uh, do that. Um, another song that I think is uh, just really good, just one of our great vocalists, I, you know, I don't believe she belongs in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I mean, this was a past conversation, uh, Whitney Houston. <laughs> but can you think of anybody with a greater voice to sing some of the classic Christmas songs? And she does a version of Do You Hear What I Hear. That's the one, right? Oh. That is vocally stunning. It, it is perfection. And actually, uh, Carrie Underwood does a great version of that as well. Uh, but Whitney, whoa, just. I know. Yeah. So that song, I heard it the other day and I was thinking, oh my gosh, I have to mention this uh, today because vocally it's perfection and it's just really what you, you, you feel like you're sitting in a church with the candles and you hear the song and you're just moved. So, you know, you're absolutely right. And that is a classic, but it, it brings me to my question for you. 
which is, and this is this is real music nerd stuff, right? <laughs> okay. For people who have physical copies of albums, right? Whether yeah. it's vinyl or CDs or God help you, cassettes or eight tracks, right? I know that you, much like your book collection there behind you, you are very careful in how you organize your yes. music collection. Yes. So if somebody has a Christmas album, so let's say it's Amy Grant, for example, are you gonna yeah. put it, are you gonna put the Christmas album with the rest of her albums or to keep all the Christmas music separate? Is it its own separate subcategory? Well, to me, it's a no-brainer. I've got a separate category of Christmas music. Um, occasionally, there will be an artist like Neil Diamond. You make it feel like Christmas was on a studio album, and it was included in his... He, he also re-recorded it with the very inferior version, I feel, on his Christmas first Christmas album. But the best version is on his actual studio album of of pop hits, pop songs. Yeah. Uh, so that then goes under Neil Diamond, but uh, the Christmas albums have their own category. There you go, I, I, I thought so. So yeah, the same way. But now that I digitized everything, I actually make a oh. second copy and I, I file it twice. Yeah. <laughs> you know, these are these important things we have to decide. By the way, you mentioned Feliz Navidad and, and of course, uh, Jose Feliciano. Let me tell you, Christmas is not complete until you've heard Feliz Navidad by our good friend, William Shatner. Have you ever heard this version? You have to look this up. It is I will so have to. tremendously Shatner uh, <laughs> that it's absolutely worth a listen. Yeah, you have to have to find this one, but it's, it's an absolute classic. <laughs> I'm not sure I've heard it. I'm gonna have to listen to it. Might, I'll I mean, send that one your way. I'll send that one your way. Yeah. All right. So before we wrap this up though, I wanna ask you, what is your least favorite Christmas song? Oh, wow. Um, you know, it, it, to me, it's, you know, there's always certain ones that, yeah, you hear that and you and, yeah, reach for the dial, right? You, uh, you, yep. you, you hit that, hit that button. Uh, and, and there, there are a few for me that uh, I, I may not mention to be uh, <laughs> uh, politically correct here uh, in the, uh, in the business, but for me, uh, I know, right. It, 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 it's, it's, it's tough, but uh, it's it's Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer for me, for okay. sure. Okay. That's, well, that's one that just... Uh, uh, so that's uh, a safe one to say. Yes. You don't want to say what you really feel. Yeah. How about you? Um, my least favorite, uh, for, for one thing, there are a couple of songs that are considered Christmas songs that I always get airplayed that are not Christmas songs that drive me crazy. I don't care about songs like Winter Wonderland or Sleigh Ride, which are more about the season. That's Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, winter. That's all right. It's not really Christmas, but it's about the, the season. But Baby, It's Cold Outside. I just don't, everybody does that song as a duet. Don't like it. It's, uh, it's just not a Christmas song. It might be okay as a regular song, but it, it's not a Christmas song. It's not even a holiday song. It's about drinking too much and whatever. I think the, and I think the political correctness uh, era has come for that song and it's, it's disappeared to a great extent. I still hear it. I just, I've heard it. Uh, I've heard it a few times already. Also from the sound of music, my favorite things. Yeah. Uh, there's a brief mention of Christmas, right? Just brief mention of Christmas, but it seems like it's, it's about everything that Christmas is not about. It's about, give me this, give me, this, this is what I want. Give me, you know, these are my favorite things. Give them to me. Um, it's fine within the context of the sound of music, but it's not a Christmas song. Hey, get me these gifts, will you please? Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't like it. That's not what Christmas is about. I would have to say, uh, if we get more into the contemporary vein, um, at, and, and this is an artist that I hope we do again, but I hope he doesn't watch this. Uh, uh, Paul McCartney in Wonderful Christmas Time. I just don't like it. Uh, sometimes I force myself to listen through it a few times because you know what, it's part of Christmas now and you hear it, but, um, uh, it's not my favorite at all. I, I lyrically, I don't even know what it is. I it's, it's pretty simple. And I, there you go. There you go. <laughs> you know what? Just while no, you're, I, I'm not going to argue with you now. <laughs> There's so many and, uh, good or bad. I love to hear what all the different artists do with them. Uh, and diff different interpretations of, I can listen to the same song, you know, 10 different times with different people singing it. Everybody kind of adds their own thing. That's my only thing. If you're going to record it, you know, do your thing with it, right? So have, have some fun yeah. with it. And, right, uh, exactly. Uh, they, they typically, I, I feel like sometimes Christmas albums, 
there's like 10 Christmas songs and everybody does the same 10 songs. And there, I, I, I always loved when I interviewed artists that did Christmas albums was, you know, when did you record the album and how did you get into the Christmas spirit when it's 90 degrees outside and you're sweating? Yeah. And you know, they would say they put up Christmas trees, they would put presents under the tree and, and, and all that kind of stuff to get into the spirit. But so many albums seem like they're kind of like production line and low production values. Let's, let's record this in three days and, and, and put it out without a lot of money behind it. The, the one, traditional arrangements, right. Yeah, but then you get an artist like a Josh Groban or, or TSO or somebody where, uh, man, it's, it, it's genius. I mean, it's just pure artistry in there. Um, and and you you can tell that the time and effort and there's a true love for the project rather than just saying okay what's next oh we're doing uh, Winter Wonderland okay and then we'll do Rudolph and Frosty and and it's very simple and they you just kind of spew it out um, I feel like a lot of them are done that way but because uh, the same songs are recorded Ooh, right I, don't know. I I admire a project like what Sia did last year where she actually put out an entire album of Christmas music but it was all originals yeah and it was actually pretty solid none of them have gone on to become a standard yet but there's there's some great tracks on there and and that, that that takes some guts to do it does take guts because nobody's gonna play it right <laughs> you know because they play the songs that people know and you can sing along with them in the car so it's a very it's a very cool artistic thing but as far as you know we're gonna hear see a, a year or two or even this year on the radio probably not right not no unfortunate because we need some new new ones too um, one one honorable mention I have to mention. Yeah, sure. Back in the quirky category, Dolly Parton has a new uh, album out called "Have a Holly Dolly Christmas." Yes. Uh, and in it, she and Jimmy Fallon do a version of the Mariah Carey song "All I Want for Christmas Is You." It oh, is that's great. It is so much fun. I'll uh, to check that out. Not going to get more airplay than Mariah, you know, but uh, it's it's just a, a fun fun. This past weekend on Saturday Night Live, uh, Melissa Villasenor during Weekend Update did a great Dolly Parton Christmas Im uh, impression that uh, is definitely worth seeking out. It's, it's some fun stuff. So, it's and I saw classic. a little Christmas special with, with Dolly. Uh, you can't go wrong with Dolly, right? No, Dolly, it was a great Christmas special. It was fun. It was socially distanced, so it was a little bit different, but she made it very interesting. On the Saturday Night Live bit, uh, Dolly actually tweeted and said, said uh, she, she looks better and sings better than me. I loved it. <laughs> uh, that's great. <laughs> Dolly, she's she's killing it this year, right? She did help, helped with the vaccine. She also just I think saved a kid from a car accident recently. It's been it's it's been a, it's 2020 has been Dolly's year. I've got somebody her, is, is doing imagination work. library program. Her uh, she's got a couple books out, a big uh, a collection of her music, and a new Christmas uh, album or Christmas special. And uh, I believe on Netflix she's got a series of movies based on her songs coming out. So she is. She's crazy busy. That's good for her. I'm glad somebody's working. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, Arena Guy, uh, I know you do you do some fun stuff on, on social this time of year. Uh, as always, uh, where can people find you? Uh, just look under the Arena Guy, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Our past podcasts are on there, including these. And uh, just a lot of fun. I think maybe we should mention, uh, too, just maybe a couple of streaming concerts. We kind of mentioned TSO. Yeah, please. On the 18th. Uh, and go to TransSiberianOrchestra.com and, and get all the details, but it's on the 18th this Friday, depending on when, when you view this. Uh, it's it's an annual tradition here in Columbus for the past 20 years. Oh, and it's so, it's, it's just magical. Yeah, it really is great. And the fact that we can't do shows this year, this is an alternative way to enjoy TSO and keep the tradition going. And they'll be back next year, I'm sure. Carrie Underwood, Josh Groban is coming up and uh, Andrea Bocelli. And a bunch go to their own websites to get uh, information on that. But it's a way to get maybe the live concert experience in Dolly too, um, virtually this year since we can't do it live. And it's just a way to get into Christmas spirit with some of the great artists that we have come to uh, love and, and love to present at the arenas. Absolutely. Uh, great recommendations there. And uh, again, yeah, the, like you mentioned, the, the artist website, I usually have the details uh, or you can uh, uh, just even on their Facebook page, usually it's the, the pinned post to their top of their uh, account right now. So yeah. Arena Guy, it's a pleasure. I'm enjoying talking to you this holiday season. Uh, next week, 
I'm gonna, we're gonna, we're, I, I would like to look at some of your favorite, uh, maybe it's a, uh, not quite as deep of a dive, but some of your favorite uh, pop culture ornaments on the, uh, the Arena oh. Guys Christmas tree. So we'll look forward to okay. that. We can do that. And then today, the, the question was, what are like five of your favorite Christmas songs? And look at the many tangents I went off on based on that question. So I think we probably, if you counted through it, we probably hit about a hundred. So there you go. Probably. It's just part of who the arena guy is. That's what we, that's what we do here. So, all right, great stuff. <laughs> For the latest uh, concert event uh, news, whether it's even uh, blood drives we have coming up or uh, uh, links to stuff with the, there was the, uh, the blue jackets or the uh, Ohio state uh, teams plan. Uh, you can visit schottensteincenter.com or nationwide arena.com. Arena guy, pleasure. Uh, hopefully uh, we'll have the ornaments on the tree by the next time we talk. All right. We'll do that. Yeah.